And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Love Letter has taken the world by storm. Very, very popular game, very small deck of cards. Lots of people have said, let's make games with small decks of cards. Well, who should we want to go to but the designer of Love Letter himself? And that would be a new game that he's come out with now. Uh, well, one of the designers, uh, and that's Lost Legacy. This is a small game that is very similar to Love Letter in how it plays, but has a different feel. But they wanted to make it exciting, so they actually have two decks of cards in this game. You can use either deck to play pretty much the exact same game. Let me show you how it plays. There are two decks of cards that come with the game. Each of them has a lost legacy. One has a starship and the other has a flying garden. There's little symbols in the corner so you know which deck is which. And they're called the starship and the flying machine. So you'll take one of those decks and you will shuffle that deck and you will deal one card to each player in the game. You'll then take the draw pile and place that in the middle of the table and take one card out of the draw pile and place it in the runes, it's called. On a player's turn, they will draw a card from the draw pile. They will look at the two cards in their hand and they will play one of those cards in front of them. That card will give them some sort of action usually. They have to discard that, that by playing it, they're discarding that card. This will continue around. Now it's possible that many of these cards will put people out of the game. When someone's out of the game, we simply just skip them as we are continuing on as we play. However, if we get to the end of the deck and the deck is gone, then at that point, players are going to uh, try to guess where the lost legacy is. They'll do it in turn order number. So, for example, uh, if someone had a one, we would say, okay, one you guess first, two you guess second. So let's say there was a two in the game, and he says, okay, I think it's the one that's in the ruins. So we look at the one in the ruins. Nope, he was incorrect. Okay, what's the next number? The next number happens to be five. Five says, oh, I have it, it's in my hand. Then you win. And so that's how the game is played. So the, having a lower number is obviously better for the end of the game because you will have the first guess of where the card is. Although having lower numbers can be dangerous, let me show you what the cards do. Okay, looking at the cards from this spaceship set, here we have the strongest card in the game, the Girl Fate, because she is the first chance to look at cards. The problem is, if anyone ever sees this card in your hand, someone looks at this card, you're out of the game. Then we have the General. You can look at the top card of a deck, then exchange that card with his hand. The Female Thief has a chance to, during the course of the game, look at someone's hand, or look at the card in the ruins, and if they happen to find the Lost Legacy, they win automatically. Uh, the Swordsman here can look at someone else's hand. If they have an X, they're out of the game. This is the starship itself. Now you can't discard it, or you can't play it, but it might, you might be forced to discard it. If you do, it gets shuffled back into the draw pile. It will eventually be out. It's pretty interesting. If you have this card at the end of the game, you know you have it, but you have to fool other players because if they have the one, two, three, or four, they'll be able to guess it's in your hand and win. The old map lets you look at the top two cards and add one of them. Oh, so it lets you look at the top card and add it to the runes. The search lets you look at any card in the runes and exchange that with your hand. The Assault lets you look at someone else's hand and you can exchange that card with your hand. And the Sneak Attack, if someone ever looks at this card from your hand, they're out of the game. Booyah! Also, I should mention that each of the cards has some dots. They're hard to see probably on the video, but there's a certain, it shows you how many cards there are of the game. Basically, there's three X's, three eights, three sevens, two sixes, and one of all the rest. X's are kind of a pain in the neck though. The problem with them is, at the end of the game, if you can't use an X to uh, look for the Lost Legacy. You actually need a number. Now, the other deck of cards has the Saint. Uh, you can discard the Saint later on. When you eject it, you can use her to resurrect yourself. Uh, this guy returns all the discards of one player to the deck and shuffles it. This guy looks at up to two cards in the runes. You can exchange one of those cards with their hand. This guy takes everyone's hand, shuffles them, and re-deals them out to everybody. This is the Flying Garden, pretty much the... Uh, this one here can be discarded, unlike the spaceship. However, you put it in the runes instead of the discards, and you shuffle it in the runes. You can show everybody that it's in the runes. It's interesting. Here you can look at the top card of the deck, shuffle it with the discard of any player, and place both those in the runes. Here you can shuffle all the cards in the runes and look at one of them. 
Here you have a curse. You can name a number, not an X, and look at someone else's hand. If that number is in their hand, they're out of the game. And this is a wound. Totally worthless, and if you discard two of them, you're out of the game. But again, you don't want to be stuck with them, so you might discard one. Since there are two decks of cards in the game, there's a couple things you do. First of all, you can take all the decks, shuffle them together, you know, using all the cards if you're playing with five or six players. And then you can play basically a mega game, although it's still not that big of a deck. And you would only play with one of the Lost Legacies, not two of them. Or you can build a custom deck. So, for example, you, you could say, I'm going to use the eights from one deck and I'm going to use the sevens from another deck. You can't mix the numbers. If you're going to use eights, you use all eight, three eights from one deck. But you can mix and match the numbers to your pleasing and make whatever set you want. Either way, the game plays pretty much the exact same way. It's just that the mix of cards will change how it feels. Well... Let me, I'm going to hold off on the obvious question first, but let's talk about whether it's fun or not. And, and the simple question is yes. Uh, the decks are, are, are very different in how they feel. One of them has the, 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 the middle pile, uh, keeps the ruins, keeps getting bigger and bigger, and you're like searching for that card in the ruins. We actually spread our ruins out on the table so you can remember which cards have been chosen. But it comes down to this guessing where is that card. And... You know, there's still that chance, don't look at this card, because if you see this card, I lose. There's, the, I love the bombs, where if I look at the card in your hand, I'm out of the game, ha <laughs> ha. So there's this back and forth, but if you've never played a game like this before, it's a very quick game, and this doesn't have the points like Love Letter does, it's a once and done type game, but it's fun. Now, I've played it in all the different variations. I've played both decks. I think I might like the spaceship deck a little better than the other one. Uh, I mix the decks and I think there's probably some combos, although I think the initial starting decks may be the best combos. I've mixed both decks together and played with five and six people, and that was fun too. This game is good. Now, the burning question, of course, is, is it better than Love Letter? Do I need both? You don't need both, but is it better than Love Letter? Yes. I'm going to say yes. I think it's a little more complicated than Love Letter, although that's like saying a two's more Two's bigger than a one, but I mean, it's, it's not that complex, but I love at the end of the game, it comes down to where is the lost legacy? Where is that flying gardens? Where is the spaceship? And if you know where it is, and sometimes you don't, and sometimes it's between two things. So I think that's a fun concept. I think that's a fun thing to come down to the end game. Say, like, I know it's here. They turned a card over and it wasn't because I switched it earlier in the game and you didn't follow the cards properly. You can watch people as they switch cards. Are they holding on to the Lost Legacy? Because if you are holding on to the Lost Legacy, you will have a really good shot at winning at the end of the game because you know where the card is. But at the same, ah, it's so cool. You really have to play this one to try it out. I would not be surprised if this game is picked up possibly by AEG to be published later on. But if it's not, you hunt down a copy of this. It's an exceptionally cool little game, Lost Legacy. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.